Hello. In this lesson, I'd like to talk to you about the wave functions for a particle living in an infinite potential well. Alternatively, we can say we're looking for the solutions to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. If you like what I do, and you'd like to support it, well then Patreon is the place to do that. So, let's begin. Here is an infinite potential well, which extends from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to l. Clearly it's even, or symmetrical, around x is equal to l over 2. Now, for physical reasons, we cannot have infinite energy. Note that the potential energy is infinite outside the well, and this basically means that outside the well, the wave function must be zero, or cannot exist. Conversely, inside the well, the potential energy is zero, and the wave function is non-zero. So perhaps, in the same way you would intuitively expect, the wave function for a particle living in an infinite potential well is only defined inside the well. Now, in order to calculate the wave functions, we must solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And it happens that the time-independent Schrodinger equation is an eigenvalue equation. And in an eigenvalue equations, we always refer back to the operator. So with this equation, it's the energy operator, the Hamiltonian energy operator. We say that the eigenvalues are eigenvalues of the energy operator, and we say that the solutions, the wave functions, are eigenstates of the Hamiltonian energy operator. And the language is important. So, what do the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian operator, or the wave functions for a particle living in this infinite potential well, look like? Here they are. We have the square root of 2 over L outside of the sine of n pi x over L, where n is an integer known as the principal quantum number. And I've plotted the square of the wave function for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 3 on your screen. And the reason I plotted the square is the wave function itself isn't physically measurable, but the square is. So these are the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian energy operator, or the wave functions for a particle living in an infinite potential well, extending from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to L. Now, it happens that the Hamiltonian energy operator, for physical reasons, must be Hermitian. And this basically means that the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian are have a mathematical property of being complete. Now remember with 3D space, this is also known as Euclidean space, we have the unit vectors i hat, j hat and k hat and we use those in linear combinations to describe any other vector or state in our Euclidean space. And that basically means that those three vectors are complete. Well, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian operator are also complete. We can take linear combinations of those to describe other wave functions for particles living in our infinite potential well. And that's given by the expression in the bottom center of your screen. So we say that the wave functions, the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian operator are complete. Now, abstract quantum states or quantum, uh, quantum wave functions live not in Euclidean space, but something we call Hilbert space. Also, I've actually chosen a rather special case here because this isn't the most general way of, of getting the solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation. And the reason it's special is because, if you remember, one of the boundaries was at x is equal to zero, and that actually sets some of the solutions to zero, though they're mathematically acceptable solutions. So let's look at the most general solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation for such an, uh, an infinite potential well. Here are the details for the most general solution. Note that I'm going to define the well width as negative to positive PL, where P is any number. And notice actually the well width in this case is going to be 2P times L. So for such a well, an infinite potential well, the energy is going to be given by this expression, which is 1 over twice the mass of the particle, outside of the square of n pi h bar over 2p times l. And remember, this is the width of the well. And the reason I'm writing it in this particular way here is it allows us to see patterns later on. If you're interested, the wave number and the wave, uh, the wavelength are given by these expressions. But we're really interested in the wave function. So the wave function for such an infinite potential well is given by this expression here. And notice, it looks mathematically different to what we had a moment ago, in that we have both cosine and sine solutions, 
we have a linear combination of the cosine and sine solutions. The thing is though, if you look carefully, we'll see that the cosine solutions are non-zero only when the principal quantum number n is odd, and the sine solutions are non-zero only when the principal quantum number n is even. So actually, the wave function here is alternately cosine or sine, but never both. And yet, when we had the well extending from x is equal to zero to x is equal to l, we only had the sine solutions. And actually, the cosine solutions were always there. It just happened that the x is equal to zero set the coefficient on the cosine to zero. So when one of the boundaries of the infinite potential well is at zero, the cosine term is going to go to zero, and you'll be just left, mathematically anyway, with the sine term, or physically just with the sine term. But notice this time, actually, the principal quantum number n is every integer, both even and odd. And it's, this is the reason why these are actually physically equivalent, though they look mathematically different. So let's start looking at the solutions to various different types of infinite potential well. First, let's consider where we set p as uh, to a half. So it's extending from negative to positive l over two. Notice the well width is simply one times l. And this is what goes in the denominator of the energy expression. Also, notice that the boundary doesn't start at x is equal to zero, and hence we expect to get both cosine and sine solutions. But this time we have one times l in the denominator. And notice the one times l here as well. That's why I'm, I'm very careful in how I'm writing the normalization constant, so we can see the, the pattern here. So we'd expect then if we went from x is equal to zero to x is equal to l, the cosine term would disappear. We would start then getting a slightly different looking wave function. But in fact, the energy and all of that would be identical. Which of course is what we have, and we've already seen it. And notice of course that the denominator in the normalization constant is the same as when we had negative to positive L over two. Now let's consider going from negative to positive L. So the well width is twice L, which is manifested here in the energy, here in the wave number, and here in the wavelength. Notice that we don't have a boundary at x is equal to zero, so we get both cosine and sine solutions, and that in the, the normalization constant, we have the well width of twice L. So what would happen if we extended from x is equal to zero to x is equal to two L? We'd expect that the cosine solution would happen to go to zero in this case, just the, the coefficient on the cosine would set it to zero. We would still have the sine solutions, that the principal quantum number could be any integer, and we would expect the same normalization constant. Which of course is exactly what we get. You can pause the video here if you want for a moment. Finally then, what if we were to set the well from x is equal to zero to x is equal to four L? The well width is four L, so we expect that to be in the denominator on our energy expression, and similarly on our wave number and wavelength expressions. We're just going to get the sine solution this time because the cosine's constant or coefficient is set to zero, but we still get the same term for the 4L in the normalization constant. Now, if we simply go from negative 2L to positive 2L, we should get the same energy, the same wavelength, the same wave number, and we should get the same normalization constant, but we should also get a cosine term. Note, mathematically, the cosine term is always here. It just happens there's a zero on the coefficient associated with it. And here is exactly what I said, exactly as we expected. So hopefully at this point you can appreciate why I specifically chose to describe the well width as negative to positive PL. So hopefully that was useful, that you learned a lot from that, and maybe cleared up some queries or confusions you had from your own, your own lessons. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you really like what I'm doing, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.